the local media are reporting, and local authorities for that matter, are reporting that dozens of people have been killed. More have also been injured. There is some uh, debate at the moment as to the exact death toll. We are seeing figures between around 60 and even more than 100, with those details still yet to be confirmed. But uh, the target of this Israeli airstrike was a school in a part of uh, Gaza City. Now, these schools are being used uh, effectively as places for displaced uh, Palestinians to seek refuge. And that's why we've seen so many people at this school. We understand, uh, certainly from a statement that's been put out from the Israeli Defence Force, that there was a mosque nearby as well. And given the timing of this strike, uh, there may well be extra casualties and extra deaths there uh, because it would have coincided with uh, preparations for dawn prayers in Gaza. So a lot of that information is still coming to light. Uh, the Israeli Defence Force says it targeted this school because Hamas was using it as a command centre. Palestinian authorities unsurprisingly say that that was not the case. This was just a refuge for people who were seeking shelter after the uh, many months of war that they've had to endure in Gaza. So we'll keep across those details as they come to hand over the next couple of hours. Yeah, Matthew, in a separate development, um, Australia has joined the condemnation of a high-ranking Israeli minister. What did this minister say? This is the far-right finance minister, Bezalel Smotrich. He is very outspoken when it comes to the issue of the Israel-Gaza war. And he made some comments earlier this week, effectively saying that Israel had been forced to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza rather than starve the population there, even though uh, many believed that starving the population was morally justifiable uh, to try to secure the release of Israeli hostages currently held by Hamas. Over the last couple of days also, we have seen condemnation of those comments and indeed today the Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong has taken to social media. Uh, she has come out very strongly against it and says that Australia joins with its allies including the United Kingdom, France and Germany in condemning this sort of behaviour. She says that the starvation of people is indeed a war crime and again she has urged uh, all of those involved in this conflict to try to work towards a ceasefire and a hostage deal in coming days. Bezal Lel Smotrich is, as I mentioned, very outspoken. He's also copped some flack over the last uh, 12 hours or so from the White House for comments he made about those the, or the prospect of a ceasefire and hostage deal, those talks which Israel is sending negotiators to in either Doha or Cairo next week uh, are being uh, brokered by the United States, by Qatar and Egypt. Uh, Mr Smotrich said that any ceasefire deal would be dangerous and he said that the terms of a surrender were being dictated to Israel. Israel by countries trying to mediate here. John Kirby, the White House National Security Council spokesperson, says that he is dead wrong, that his comments are putting the lives of hostages at risk. We do need to point out that uh, in terms of Bezalel Smotrich's sway within Benjamin Netanyahu's government, he is not part of the security cabinet, so wouldn't necessarily have a role in any of these sort of talks, but he is certainly a very noisy member of the Israeli government, and his comments are being heard back in Australia.